talk to some of the missionaries that we support around the world and today we have my friend our friend Justin Benedict and the Benedict family down in Costa Rica and we we brought a team down from JCC a few years ago with Justin and I don't know how long how long we've known each other but it's been a while so welcome to the podcast thank you I'm excited to uh, spend this time with you um when did we meet how many years ago it had to be uh, let's see it's got to be got to be about maybe 11 or 12 years ago are you serious yeah because we've been in costa rica for been in costa rica for over nine years so it was before then so wow yeah so we met at a it was uh it was mike silva we were with Mike Silva in Dominican yep. Republic, and um, from my, I'm sure it's got to be the same experience for you, but like they, it's, we go to the hotel, it was like a resort, and that's a story <laughs> in itself, but um, we show up at a lobby, and they say, okay, you're going to room with this guy, Justin, over here, and I look over, and it's like, you're like the rock star guy with the full hawk and the guitar, and I'm like, oh, no. I'm staying with the rock star. You're gonna be, I'm going to be up all night. Uh, I was up all night, but it's not because you're a rock star. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's where we met. Yeah, and, and our, our story we always laugh about was when we were uh, at that resort. We, were, we went out and we're sharing the gospel with one of the guys that worked there. And got his buddy to be the translator remember so it's like, and nothing like it like, tell your <laughs> yeah. that way they both get it right they uh -huh. both get the gospel you got the co-worker preaching the gospel to the other mm -hmm. guy and neither of them want to yeah. be involved it's like tell him he needs jesus hey and he would tell him and finally he's like look i can't do this anymore <laughs> I retire as a translator. <laughs> that was amazing. So anyway, so um, yeah, so tell us uh, a little bit. I know. So just tell us about like how you became a Christian and what, you know, kind of what happened in your life up to the point of bringing you to Costa Rica. Okay. So uh, I, I received Christ when I was very young, when I was seven years old. And um, really, my parents had, had just come to the Lord just before that. And I was at a church activity for kids and did not even want to go up front or anything. But I was very interested already in God. And, and I could feel that the Lord was calling me um, to a relationship with him. But I didn't really know what all that meant. And uh, when they gave an opportunity for those that wanted to come forward, there wasn't many people going forward. but the next thing I knew, I was up walking forward. I felt like God literally stood me up. And uh, so I went forward and received Christ. And, and really that transformed my life at, at seven years old. And it, it just continued to grow over the years. Um, <clears throat> I was given a guitar by my grandfather when I was nine and started playing the guitar a little bit. But I didn't really get it until I was in high school that I really started um, using the guitar and got asked to play in a talent show at a church and I didn't want to do it but um, I put put a little band together with my brothers and thought well, well we'll try it so we did it and then basically from there we continued to get invited to other churches someone came up to us at that just the talent show and was like will you come and do a concert at our church and I'm like another talent show they're like, no, a concert. I'm like, we don't even have songs for that. So we just, it, it kind of started that way. But then the Lord literally put um, just a passion in my heart um, 
to preach the gospel and use it as a tool. And that's really how it got started, just word of mouth. And we just kept going. And that made it a great impact in my life, having a focus to continue to use a gift, a, a tool um, to share the gospel with as many people as possible. So that's kind of what directed me into ministry. And after doing that for 18 years, we had opportunities um, to go in and out of international tours with most of the international bands today. And uh, just as an independent band, it, it was only doors that God could have opened and very powerful to be able to share the gospel with thousands of people. But after thinking I was going to do that forever, as we all get focused on our lives and the path that we're on and get comfortable, God's like, you know what? I, I would rather have you just give up everything. And not knowing what that even meant, God continued to press it on our hearts. And, and in my quiet time, as I sought the Lord at a deeper level because of what he was placing in my heart by his strength, I began to realize um, that the Lord wanted us to give up, sell our house and give up everything that we own. So um, we actually stepped forward in that before we even knew what we were going to do or where we were going, which is so the way the Lord works because he wants us to um, live out our lives, you know, by faith, right? In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And many of us want to receive Christ by faith, but to walk it out is completely different that we have to have that surrender and uh, a heart to allow him to strengthen us to actually complete the journey that he's called us to walk so so really as he's doing it making all these um things come together in front of us we watched and realized he was calling us to the mission field and that's well, how through opening doors we ended up in costa rica and you have right. how many kids at that point <laughs> at that point five okay, you had five when god starts stirring in your heart yep we had five at that point and yeah, now we have nine. So, <laughs> so the Lord, the Lord has, uh, yeah, just, just continued to, to lead us in so many ways to trust Him, and um, each one of those kids are such a blessing. So, because um, I, I knowing the story a little bit, so basically, um, you, you know, you just started feeling like you needed to start selling stuff, and then you guys had a garage sale. That was the best story right there. Like, tell us about the garage sale. Yeah, literally, um, okay, so that led up to that was <clears throat> that God literally spoke to me um, in my quiet time in, in the Gospels and gave me the, uh, the scripture that Jesus had given to his disciples to go into all the world and to not take anything with you, to go and preach the Gospel and don't take anything with you. And it was a huge confirmation for me that God was asking us to give up everything, not just our house. And the same morning, my wife, who I was praying for for a year, that God would just speak to her. I, I told God, I'm not going to tell her anything. You tell her that she's supposed to give up everything. And when she comes to me, that'll be my confirmation. So when she came to me that exact same morning with a, the exact same scripture, but from another book of the Gospels, um, that was a huge confirmation and that the Lord was working in her heart as well. So we literally were like, God, this is not easy, but help everything to sell quickly. So we literally put everything that we owned out in front of our house and asked God to help it to sell quickly because it wasn't easy. Um, but we knew in our hearts, it was just what God was asking us to do. And it still just sounds ridiculous because we had many things like, like most people have, you know, being married at that time for 13 years as well. Um, you know, you have all kinds of things that you've collected over the years. And we literally put everything out there and it was gone in three hours, like everything. That is the greatest garage sale in, in the history of the world. <laughs> well, some lady came up or somebody came up and asked about the house too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, God even did that. And the neighbors, the Literally funny thing was the neighbors. Sale. <laughs> but it was the neighbors' reactions that was the craziest because they're like, what are you doing? 
and we're like, well, we're, we're selling everything. And they're like, well, where are you going? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> we had like no answers to tell them. They're like, well, why? And I said, well, God told us to sell everything. They're just like, okay. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but, but God did it. He, uh, and, and really when everything was gone, um, there was no doubt in our mind that we were, whether we were doing the right thing or not. And when everything was gone, it was like the heaviest weight lifted off us. We, we knew we were in the Lord's will. And when I share this, I always tell people, it's, it's not like God asks every person to give everything up. And, um, but God asks everybody to surrender everything. And there's, there's a difference that if everything in our lives are surrendered or or put out there with open hands that this stuff is not mine if god wants me to give it up i got to be willing mm -hmm. that is what a surrendered life should look like and, and that's really the picture of what god calls each of us to as a believer just to hold everything loosely as what is his plan for this since life is short and this is it we got one shot at it so um very powerful um for us in, in just the beginning of God steering us in another direction. Yeah, like you said, you had what, 13 guitars or something, all these? 17. 17 <laughs> guitars. Yeah. yeah. So you get to that point, you get to that point where you've sold everything and you still, you just don't know where you're gonna go necessarily, but you end up in right. Costa Rica. Yep. So through circumstances, the Lord opened the door and, and showed us as he was leading us to Costa Rica, that not only was he showing us to go to Costa Rica, but with no contact or anything, all the contacts, everything closed, the doors were closed. So we realized it was just step by step. God was asking us just to trust him by faith. And, and uh, really, yeah, that is what we want to encourage everyone in is just how powerful it is when we all begin to let go of things and go, you know what, this life really is about walking by faith. It's, it's a scripture that God wants us to literally live out, right? Yeah. Like, for instance, in, in James 1.22, it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but to do what it says. So many of us want to listen to it and go like, I trust the Lord with all my heart. And I'm not going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lean on my own understanding. I, I'm going to acknowledge him in all my ways, and I'm going to put my trust in him. He's going to direct my path. But then we go, when it comes down to trusting God, we go, I'm just going to trust God with just this one little part of my heart because everything else is secure and, and all around us. And so, like, when everything else changes, our worlds are rocked. So it's, it's just living that out, and, and that's really our passion is, is to live that out and, and help others to see that yeah so um i don't know if we got too far off track but as far as like <laughs> what you you just getting there you know I, I know some of the stories and some of our we, we we brought a team down there and they got to hear some of the stories and stuff but you know it just has been a, a faith walk and watching god provide for you guys and you have nine kids and so <laughs> it's a it's a show everywhere you go right I know. I, so true. I mean, everybody knows you in Costa Rica. It's like the crazy guy with all the kids. So what do you think from the time you're sitting there with all your stuff sold and, and, um, and, and your house sold um, to the point where you're uh, to where you are now? Like what, what's the most surprising thing that you've learned in that? Just because it's always a walk and God teaches us how to, how to walk by faith. So we're strengthened and, what do you think is mm -hmm. the most uh, shocking or most surprising thing that you've learned or seen over the years? I would say the fact that what God's word says, his promises are so true. Like in the United States with all the security and all of the precautions, precautions that we take with credit cards and everything, having a backup plan. I think the thing that's the most surprising is when God asks us to give up all, we literally broke even paying off every debt. And so we had nothing. And it really has rocked our world. Just watching God provide in every way, watching him 
uh, bring healing, um, and and just be there really literally every step of the way. I mean, for instance, I mean, I can go story after story, but for instance, we had one month that God provided for us for an entire month with no money. And I really, that month for us was a, a transformation of our way of thinking and going, okay, we could call family and we could ask people from the States, from back home, you know, we're, we're struggling, we need help. But God spoke to me in my quiet time and was like, don't ask anybody but me. Don't even tell anybody. And so we literally, um, the little amount of money that came in as a donation, we had to make a choice to use it to go do ministry on the other side of the country um, and drive there to buy new tires and some fuel for our vehicle. And that's all it would cover. And then we would have no money for the rest of the month. Because when, when our donations come in, the church that receives them uh, literally puts it in one time a month and that's it. So you don't have any more coming and we don't take money here in, in Costa Rica. So, so we literally um, just came to a point of praying and going, God, well, you didn't call us to just sit here and, and eat though. That's an important thing to survive. We know that you've called us here for a purpose. And as we prayed, we could feel the, the Holy spirit so strong that we're like, you know what, we're going to buy the tires. We're going to get the fuel and we're going. So we went and we watched almost an entire church during the service fall on their knees and just calling out to God going, you know what, we're wrong. We, we didn't truly understand the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the pastor himself also um, after the service asked for us to pray for him. And um, we just watched the church be transformed. So we got back and literally had nothing to eat and, and no other money for anything scrounging through change and everything. There was nothing. Um, we literally watched stores tell us, the owners tell us, don't worry about paying. Um, when I went there with change to fruit stands and, and bakeries, do the same thing. You come here all the time. Here's some free bread. And, and then neighbors bringing us food, and they had no idea that they were thinking they're just sharing something, but God was using them to provide for us. And that went on for an entire month. So after that, we were like, there isn't anything that God cannot do. So, which, which really has led us to where we're at now. We've two times now God's given us vehicles completely, um, had someone call and just be like, you know, God asked me to buy you a vehicle. Um, and now crazy enough, um, we're, we're building a house and a base by faith with, with no, no support in that way, just watching God do it. And so it's, it's just, it's like what God does in all of our lives. It's little by little letting him strengthen us that when we trust in him is anything's possible. Yeah. Um, one of the things just even for me, I've been to 45 plus countries and um, just, you know, and I've spent a lot of time with different missionaries and evangelists and churches around the world and, you know, seen amazing people doing amazing things. But um, one of the things that sticks out um, to me with you is you, you do like dual things. You're, you're, you're leading worship. You're kind of like, you know, um, a church planner in some ways. You're, you're kind of helping with all these churches all around the country and other countries. And then you're also, you are truly doing the work of an evangelist. So, I mean, I know my time, I don't know how many times we've been there, but I mean, we are preaching the gospel. It's, um, Amen. Uh, so we're going, you know, whether it be out in the city center or in the churches or at the schools, we're, we're preaching the gospel, watching people um, be transformed. But it's, it's just, it's so fun to go to Costa Rica with you because we're, we are busy doing the work. It's, it's there's a lot of different kinds of ministries around the world. There's a lot of relational type ministries or like a real focus on church growth ministries. But just to be, for me, I'm an evangelist and just to go out and we're just harvesting and, you know, and throwing the seeds out continually. It's super, super fun. Um, how many, how many of the surrounding countries have you been into and what's some of the highlights of, of that ministry there? 
Um, we've been through all of Central America. And um, I mean, truly just in saying that, that's all, all glory to God because we literally came here with no contacts. So for God in nine years to lead us through every country in Central America and, and also to all of the indigenous groups throughout Central, Central America, um, to the old Mayan civilizations of, of descendants from those indigenous people to the last um, unreached indigenous in Costa Rica and also in Nicaragua, um, which also leads to, uh, because we're independent, in the fact that not one church tells us where to go <clears throat> though we have partnerships it's a powerful thing when you just let god lead you so um when god says go we just we trust him and we go and it isn't always the easy thing we've um had many encounters with the sandinista party in um nicaragua um uh, which if People that aren't familiar with that it's the the group that originally caused the civil war in nicaragua and the the whole division in that was that part of that group ended up on the caribbean side and the rest of the country and the leader took over because he said he'll i'll make it more of a democracy in the country but the sandinistas are still over there and so they have their own military and president and that's one of the regions we go to the most because there's the least amount of help and so <clears throat> we've been through many uh, roadblocks um, where th they want to, they'll rob, kill, and, and uh, rape and everything. So it's very, very dangerous. And just through the Lord leading us through, um, for instance, one story, we were coming up at night driving back. We had nowhere to stay. And we're in the middle of nowhere, about six hours out of any town on this dirt road. And here's a bunch of headlights, and it was all the Sandinistas. They had their, it was like a military. They, they got automatic weapons all facing us. But they blind you, so you'll stop, and then they, they rob you or whatever they're going to do. And so we're approaching, and I knew it, but there's nowhere to turn off. And we were just in our van. And um, I literally felt the Lord say, accelerate. And I got this, like, boldness in my heart that just do it and so i'm just like i don't even know what what's going to happen but so i start doing it and i'm hidden right for them and they have the road completely blocked all headlights and i can't even really see what what's up ahead and literally as i approached and i got closer and closer i had the thing all the way to the floor and my my family's like quiet they're praying like we got all of our kids with us and um right as we're getting close i i literally heard the lord say veer left so I just literally swerved left with the van and I was thinking we were going to ram them. And we went up this embankment that I don't know how steep it was, but it felt steep <laughs> up on this embankment with the van around this entire roadblock. And they were so like, just completely astounded by what happened. They were all just like, <laughs> and so no one shot at us or anything. They literally were like, like putting their hands in the air. Like what just happened? <laughs> So um, it, it just so many instances like that where only by God the Lord led us through it. Oh. I mean, a van like that shouldn't have been able to do that. Well, I mean, I've, I've followed you while you're, you're driving the van, so that's pretty much just the normal <laughs> everyday occurrence. Yeah, now's the time to put in a plug for Toyota diesels, I think. All right, well, uh, we're praying for you at the church, and thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep, you're going to be the missionary of the month in December for the church, so everybody will see your face and the family, and uh, they can check this video out, and hopefully we'll get to come Praise visit God. soon. Praise God, be amazing, we're ready. All right, well, thanks, thanks for sharing. Thank you.